One second, guys. Oh, God. Just, this is awesome. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Sorry, I just got so freaking hooked on this thing, I just lose track of time. <sighs> and there it goes. Just had to have that mental thought. Sorry, I just thought of, could it get any better than this? And obviously, well, it can. But as I mentioned in my last video, you gotta pay a pretty penny. Look, I understand my whole last video I was talking about, oh yeah, VR is expensive as shit, blah blah. And you know, I'm more than happy to stay with this thing, but it's not the true VR experience. Don't get me wrong, this thing is great. It's just, yeah, it's missing features and honestly, the immersion can get so much, so much stronger than this. Well, let's ask the question then. If you're in the market for a new VR, or not new, but you're in the market for a VR helmet, which one should you get and why? So essentially in this video, all I'm going to be doing is just, you know, lay out the specifications and the facts of, you know, the big top three VR helmets that are, you know, coming out in the market very soon. And yes, I say big top three. I understand there's a bunch of other ones, but HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, and the PlayStation VR are essentially the big front runners in this whole grand, you know, race. So, and yeah, I'm not including HoloLens because it's AR. It's different. I'm talking about VR right now. I understand that seems cool to have like the minority report type of situation, but AR is still very different than VR. So just throwing that out there. Also, by no means am I trying to sway you, by no means I'm trying to say, oh, this one's better in this case. I'm just laying out the facts, I'm just laying out all the things, the specifications, all the specs, everything out there just so you can make your own decisions. You're big boys and you're big girls. I'm not trying to do it. I don't benefit from that, so fuck that. Regardless, let's start with the HTC Vive. Currently the most expensive one at $799. I've already made a video in the past, you know, blah, 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 whatever. The display resolution right now is at 2160 by 1200, and that's about 1080 by 1200 each eye. The field of view is approximately 110 degrees, and the refresh rate is 90 hertz, which allows up to 90 frames per second in any video game. Now the minimum requirements for the HTC Vive to run perfectly in your system are an NVIDIA GTX 970 or an AMD R9 290. Also, it should have an Intel i5-4590 or an AMD FX-8350 processor with at least 4GB of RAM, a 1.4 HDMI port or newer, or a 1.2 display port. Also, your rig should at least have one USB port. 2.0 or greater is fine. Also, you can check if your PC is compatible by simply going onto Steam and they actually have like this uh, performance test that could actually check if your computer is actually up to snub and, you know, actually could run VR well or at least decent enough to, you know, qualify a Vive. Now, a cool little thing included with the HTC Vive is like a three-in-one connector box. Essentially, what you connect is the HDMI, the USB, and the power to this box, and you connect it right to your PC, so it's just less wires, less hassle. It's just all connecting this one little box, and it's very, very convenient. The sensors include an accelerometer and a gyroscope built into the helmet, and a front-facing camera using laser sensors. Also, yes, I need to make a correction before we move on. Yes, in my past video, I did say, oh, they gi they're giving us two controllers. What do I need two controllers? I understand this is my fault. I didn't research deeper in into it. There are two special controllers, one for each hand, specifically made for the Vive. I was under the impression that there were two Xbox. One controllers, I'm an idiot. I am sorry, my bad. Regardless of that, let's keep going. Now these laser sensors, or how, how they call them, base stations, are these two huge sensors that you put on each side of the room, and what they recommend is the room to be at least 15 feet by 15 feet. That alone is already a pretty big room. So essentially the bigger drive for the HTC Vive is actually, well, a more 360 experience. Because of the base stations, it means you can actually get up, you can actually walk around, and it'll react to like your movements, it'll react to the controllers moving, like your hands will actually move in game. So this one's more of like a, you know, get up and you know move around kind of experience which is honestly great but for the price well it shows in the price all right so now let's move on to the oculus rift now the rift is retailing for 599 now the display resolution is the same as the htc vive 1080 by 1200 per eye and 2160 by 1200 in all 
Again, the same kind of field of view, approximately about 110 degrees, the same refresh rate, the same system requirements, but this one does require more RAM, at least eight gigabytes, a 1.3 HDMI output, and at least two USB 3 ports. Now the Oculus Rift has an accelerometer and a gyroscope built in just like the HTC Vive. And the way the Oculus Rift tracks your head movements is through a tracking sensory array that uses a magnetometer that's built into the headset itself. Now, unlike the HTC Vive, the controller that it comes with is an Xbox One controller. Now, here's where the Oculus Rift differs from the HTC Vive. In this case, like unlike the HTC Vive that has the base station all across you and pretty much tracking your movements from a whole huge area, this one's only tracking your movements from pretty much directly in front of you. So, the Oculus Rift is more like, at least, it's, I don't know, the experience is more like you resting, you sitting down in front of your computer or like sitting down in a chair and everything is being done at the, with you sitting down. This is why the controller is not two very lucrative like separate hand controllers, it's just an Xbox One controller. So, whereas some people might see a problem in this, most of the time this is actually where most people see themselves in VR. Just constantly kicking back, sitting down in a chair, and just trying to enjoy the experience, just sitting down. Because some people, I mean, don't get me wrong, but not everyone wants to get up and move around when they're gaming. I mean, that's kind of one of the big draws of why motion control kind of failed. But regardless, let's move on to the PlayStation VR. Now this one is by far the cheapest of all three of them, retailing at $399, but there are reasons for this. First and foremost, the display resolution is lower than the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, running at 960 by 1080 per eye and 1920 by 1080 overall. The field of view is around the same, approximately about 100 degrees. But here's one feature that actually has over the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. The max refresh rate. Whereas the Rift and the HTC Vive are locked at 90 Hz, the PlayStation VR supports 90 Hz and 120 Hz. So overall this just provides a more smoother experience. Although, to the naked eye, 90 Hz and 120 Hz is very hard to differentiate. So, we'll see if this is actually, you know, something that actually benefits it. Now another huge difference is the system requirements. Whereas the Vive and the Rift required you to have a certain PC, it only requires you to have a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation camera. Now the sensors very similar to the Rift are an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer with the PlayStation camera acting as the sensor that tracks your movements. So essentially the PlayStation VR actually reacts to light and it uses that to track your movements. And honestly this is actually really cool because provides the possibility of actually using both playstyles that I mentioned before with the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift. With the Rift, um, pretty much, you know, you'd be sitting down playing with the uh, just with the controller, but since it, you know, picks up the light bar on the controller, you can move around your controller and it, it'll react to it. So you can still be sitting down and you can still be moving your hands around, but overall you'll still have like a sitting down experience. Or if you prefer a much more, you know, uh, physical experience, you can use the PlayStation Move controllers. So yeah, essentially that's all the facts and all the specifications of all three of the um, VR helmets. But right now, just to end things, I just wanna label out a very huge pro and a very huge con of each of the systems, or, you know, VR helmets. So let's start off with the HTC Vive. Um, huge pro. It's possibly gonna be the best VR experience due to the, the fact that, you know, base stations on each side of the room, it pretty much allows you full 360, you, know, you moving around, you roaming around, it's probably going to be the most elaborate and most, you know, I'm not going to, I mean, I haven't experienced that version myself yet, but probably, it'll probably be the best VR experience. Now, having said that, the cons. Um, price. And not just the helmet's price, but the fact is you still need a very beefy system to be able to even run the thing so it's not just going to be eight hundred dollars unless you already have all the specifications then if you do congratulations but um essentially if you're like a newcomer just barely coming into the fray and you know about the you know just just heading into it saying oh my god i want vr but you have nothing starting out with nothing this is the worst option due to the fact that it's going to be the most expensive and this will probably at least run you up to in the two thousands to three thousand dollars area. So, sorry to newcomers, this is more of like the elitists. All right, next up, the PlayStation VR. 
the Pro. Um, it seems like it's going to be the most user-friendly, and uh, with the, the inclusion of being able to use the PlayStation Move controllers as well as the DualShock, that's actually a really cool feature. And um, it, it seems like it, it could easily match, you know, keep up to pace with the Vive. It's not going to have the same overall 360 experience, but it does have a nice medium ground. And honestly, I respect that due to the fact that it's half the price. Well, half the price. I'll go with that in a second. But um, it still, it, it at least seems like it's going to be a good experience. All right, now the cons. Now, PlayStation VR will have a higher refresh rate, but it does have the lower resolution of the three, as well as it won't have the same 360, 360 experience as the HTC Vive. And also, from the get-go, I'm pretty sure they'll fix it, you know, down the line, you'll be able to use it on your own PC, but um, it's going to be very limiting, and you're only going to be able to use it for, you know, actual PlayStation titles and for your PlayStation itself. Again, I'm pretty sure modders will be able to, you know, use it on their PCs, you know, like tracking motions, you know, that's down the line. But out of the box, it's going to be a lot more limited, at least a more limited experience than the Rift or the Vive. All right, now let's talk about the Oculus Rift. And I put this at the end because, well, sadly these days, I kind of see it as being kind of underwhelming. Now, don't get me wrong. It's, I mean, it's still got great, you know, specs. It's still great look. I mean, it, it looks like it's going to be a great VR helmet. But it, it's kind of sandwiched between the, you know, much more lucrative, you know, more expensive HTC Vive and the much more cheaper option, PlayStation VR. I mean, the Oculus Rift did start the whole, uh, you know, VR craze. So it's kind of weird to see it, you know, kind of starting to fall back in popularity. It's no longer the top dog. It's just there in the middle. Again, the HTC Vive is the more expensive option, but it is seen as the more, you know, grand option, the better option, the possibly the best option. Whereas PlayStation VR is more of like the consumer option, the option that pretty much everyone has the means to because, well, in the last couple of years, the PlayStation 4 became one of the fastest selling consoles ever. So, a lot of people already have the system that the thing already goes with. So, there's already a huge market for it. So yeah, regardless of all that, um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, what VR helmet are you pretty much set on buying or which one are you leaning towards? But yeah, whichever helmet you pick, it's cool to see that, you know, VR is finally actually becoming a reality. Well, that's the video. And uh, if you're wondering which one I'm leaning towards, um, I'm actually probably going to get the PlayStation VR. Um, mostly due to convenience, um, you know, since I already have the PlayStation 4. Also, I'm not saying that, saying that you know, I'm settling on it, you know, this is probably the worst option. I'm not saying that at all. I'm actually excited to get my hands on the PlayStation VR because it seems so, so well done. I mean, at least from what we've seen, like the tech builds and all that stuff, it actually looks like it's going to be interesting. And it looks like the games that are being made for it, especially Ace Combat 7, that's the one I'm most excited for. But um, it just seems like an overall great experience. And for the price, it doesn't seem too bad. I mean, I would love to get my hands on the HTC Vive, but... Ugh, it's too rich for my blood. Regardless of all that, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.